We're at the Louis Miller Museum interviewing veterans as part of a veteran program. Would you please state your name? Frank Pierce. And where do you live, Frank? Hoosick, New York. Hoosick, New York. Have you lived in this area long, or did you move in, or what? All my life. You've lived here all your life? Except for my Army service. Okay. Uh, could you tell us a little about your life before you went into the service? Well, I uh, went through the grade school in Hoosick, District Number 2, and then I came to Hoosick Falls. I went to Hoosick Falls High School up on the hill. And during that time, I, there wasn't any transportation, so I rode the train to school every day. From Hoosick? From Hoosick. I see. And that was sort of enjoyable because there was uh, other kids that came from uh, North Palm and down that way, uh, came up to Hoosick Falls to school. We, okay. we had a lot of things that I remember during those days. Yeah, well, It was fun. You were all together on the train, and it was a different yes, kind of an it, experience. it was. Yeah, and okay, and, and, and what year did you uh, get out of school in, in Hoosick Falls? 1934. In 1934. Okay, then what happened in your life? Well, I, uh, I guess when I got out, I didn't know just what I was going to do, so I, I went back to high school and took a postgraduate course, which it was sort of common then. Yes, it was. And uh, I took up uh, shorthand and... Uh, Bookkeeping and Book, uh, like business that. subjects. And, uh, then what you do? Uh, then I worked around music for a while, and not very long. But then I decided to go to Troy Business College, and I commuted on the train between music and Troy for well, it was about a year. I went there, and I graduated from Troy Business College. And uh, my first job was at Nolan Wood. Uh, I worked for uh, Henry Kramer, who was a purchasing agent, and uh, Herbie Hamilton, who was the uh, bookkeeper, the day the payroll and things like that. And I more or less worked as a clerk and typist. And that's where I was working at the time I was drafted and went to service. And when was that, Frank? Uh, that was in 1941, in September. September 41. That was before Pearl Harbor. Right. All right. Where'd they ship you then when you left? Uh, well, I left Susie Falls and by train. Uh, I was appointed the leader of the group that came. And we had to go to Troy and then we were transferred to... New York City. And in New York City we went to from there to Governor's Island, Fort J, where we stayed there. Well we were, I was inducted that day, September third. And uh, we we stayed there for a few days, I don't remember just how many, but it was three or four days. And uh, then we were transferred to Camp Croft South South Carolina for our basic training, and I was there for three months. Was that an infantry basic training, or yes, it was. Yes. Yeah, we, our outfit was uh, well. We were basically uh, trained in uh, the anti-tank gun. It was a. I don't remember now. Just all right. It does you know? But, but you and we uh, didn't have real guns uh, to practice with, uh, yeah. we had wooden guns. Yeah, that's important to say. It wasn't until later that they actually had guns that they could supply for us to, to use. I see. But I uh, I enjoyed the, the big guns. I wasn't too good at shooting the smaller the rifles, rifles and things like that. I did make mar marksmen, I guess it was. But yeah. uh, uh, Were you in Camp Croft when the World War II uh, broke out, when they bombed uh, no, Pearl yes, Harbor? That was, uh, December, in December. Seventh, yes. I I was there uh, sitting on my bunk, I guess, when I heard over the radio that the war was declared. I see. And and then what happened? Well, I, I finished my basic training at Camp Croft. Uh, uh, then I, uh, while I was there, I 
I didn't get away from camp too much. Camp Co-op was a was a new camp. It was uh, it had just been built, with wooden barracks, and uh, but it was located in, uh, a little ways from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and uh, the soil was red clay, and uh, when it was rainy, it was very muddy and uh, it was very messy. Yeah. So our training was. Uh, we were in the mud a lot of the time, which is quite common, I guess, in the service. Yeah, but that red clay is something, I know. Oh, it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. you know, it was very disgusting. Try to keep your shoes shined up and things like that, which uh, was part of our Army training course. Okay, when you finished your basic, what happened then? Uh, when I finished basic, I was transferred to Fort Benning, Georgia. Well, I was in the replacement center for a little while there and before I was being transferred. But uh, I got to Fort Benning, which uh, was an officer training school, uh, infantry school, and I was assigned to the Harmony Church area, which uh, was all wooden barracks and it was about three miles from the main post. Of course, uh, Fort Benning uh, was a a very uh, large post and uh, mostly brick buildings in the main part of the camp. And, uh, but we were assigned to uh, this part of uh, what they call the Harmony Church area. And it was, it was all new to us and uh, there, I forget, there was Four companies, and there was 2,500, I think, in our headquarters company. It was a it was a headquarters company, which we were assigned the personnel office, which handled the records for the officer candidates. Because I know people that had clerk typist abilities; they they grabbed in a yeah, hurry because there was a lot of those jobs. Because you had gone time. to Troy Business School, that they gave didn't you didn't have any uh, wax or not many. Yeah, at that right. Time. At and that time, they, yeah. Uh, there wasn't too many men that was really qualified for those jobs, yeah. and so it was easy to, most of the places I went, why I, that was the type of job I got. Uh, yeah, because they were really short of those, uh, yeah. So I, uh, I really enjoyed the work. It was fairly easy. There was, wasn't much basic, much training, uh, military yeah. training uh, to it. And so you worked in the personnel office at Fort yes. Benning? Yes, yes, I did. All right. And That's, how? Uh, a lot of Hoosie Falls and local people who came down through the... Uh, yeah, because a lot of fellows mentioned they went through Benning. Uh, yeah. A friend of mine, uh, Liam Wilcox, who lived in the Hoosie, he uh, was in the 4th Infantry, uh, the 40, or 44th Infantry, I believe it was, uh, and he came down and went through there. And, uh, uh, he, was, he lost his life in World War He lost his life in the Battle of Bulger, I believe it was. Yeah. Did you see uh, Sergeant Goodermote that lost his life from who's uh, I didn't see him. Uh, but he lost his life too. He did, yes. All right, so how long did you stay in Benning then? Well, I was there about uh, over two years. About two over days. two years, so you you were really in the thick of the personnel work, and so yes. you yeah, became a key Howard worker. Hanks there. came down there and went through. I was I really see. surprised because he, he wasn't a young fellow. He, he yeah. was in his middle 40s or late 40s, I think, yeah. when he went through the school, and it was a pretty tough course. Uh, so he, he, still, yeah, he went up to Pickett in Virginia, I think. He's yeah. still living and very healthy. Yeah, 97, yeah. While I was down there, I saw Liam Hutt, uh, who was our mice superintendent of schools. Yes, right. He was down there uh, as a captain. I see. Uh, well, I think he was later made a major. So you, you actually had a lot of contact with Hoosick Falls people because yes, they were everybody went through Benny went through personnel so yes. you knew that I, they were coming. I would see their name and I didn't meet them all, but yeah, uh, but you knew who was there. I knew the best why you tried to get get to see them at least. But I see. So you were there for two years and then what happened? Uh, well, let's see. As a, the war uh, went on there, why? Well, 
they decided that they needed more overseas, and uh, so I was uh, sent to Fort George Meade, and uh, from there I was shipped to Italy. Land when we went on the, uh, I think the name of the transport was a Blitz, uh, maybe the Fort Blitz or something. I see. Uh, of course, I was glad I didn't go in the Navy because I didn't like the, the sea. Did you, get a, did you get seasick at all? I, I got seasick before I even got out of the harbor. <laughs> I see. So you had a tough ride over. I did. Uh, and of course, uh, it was a long trip. It took 14 days and, yeah. to get to Naples. Landed in Naples. They, uh, zigzagged all the way across. And, uh, yeah, when was that? What year was that? That uh, was in 1944. In 44. Of course, the submarines were pretty well under control by 44. Uh, so, but yeah, they still had a. This was early 44. Let's see. I'm not sure just when 44 that was. Where did you land? In, in Naples, huh? In Naples. All right. And, and uh, we were. Um, well, we, we took a little railroad. It was a, a, a open box cars they were. And we had sort of a, well, it wasn't a very long ride, but it was a rough ride. And these open box cars, a very small railroad. And we went to Caserta, which, uh, and we were assigned to, uh, well, we, we were in tents for a short time. But then we were assigned to the Royal Palace in Caserta. Uh, I was uh, assigned to, uh, they called it Matusa. Was, uh, I was in the IG section, assigned to the IG section, and they, uh, we were uh, under the British command. It was Allied Forces uh, headquarters. and. Uh, it was our job to, uh, the IG section, they investigated claims of the Italian government uh, against the United States government and also uh, any crimes and things that the uh, servicemen would do. Nice. We had a team which uh, traveled all over the theater and uh, investigated these things. Oh, oh, the war in Italy, where was it when you got there? How far uh, up were they then? Well, let's see. Uh, yeah. um, the war was... Uh, uh, it was a battle of casino. It was, uh, yeah. May four, 1944. Oh, so... I see. That was the yeah. big battle there with the monastery up on the hill. Yeah, there, that's about where it was. And, of course, yeah. we were back down in Naples it was. I see. But, uh, but the war, war was still going on in Italy when you got there. And, and, you know? uh, of course it wound up pretty fast uh, really after we got over there. Okay, so you were in uh, this department, this uh, investigation, the ID right. department. I, I was actually in that assignment there. I, I was did more typing. I was a typist and uh, Actually, I wasn't that good a typist, but... Uh, I see, but you typed up the records as yeah, they came Yeah, there was a lot of typing involved. Yeah, yeah. right, because they, if they're doing yeah. investigating, it all has to be... Yeah, some of the, uh, well, the officers and the uh, some of the uh, sergeants, uh, they flew all over to investigate these things. And, uh, I see. It was, it was interesting, and I, I enjoyed it. Uh, we were under General Clark's command, I guess it was. I see. All right, so then what happened? You were there, and did you stay right in that? Uh, uh, we didn't stay there too long. I was reassigned. Uh, not the work of that uh, particular department, apparently, uh, was getting finished up, I guess. and. Uh, I was assigned to uh, an ordnance company. First it was uh, 
991st uh, Ordnance Company. And uh, this was a, well, it was a really a tank outfit, but it, I, I worked as a company clerk most of the time in that department. Uh, and we, uh, we were located at our, well, we even had our barracks in the uh, Fiat building, automobile manufacturing company. At, uh, and that's where the uh, Nancy headquarters was at the time they were in that area. I see. And we drove them out and then we took over. I see. And the Americans made it their headquarters. Yes. Yes, it was. And, uh, this, uh, this ordnance company, why they retrieved uh, tanks and things like that. And, uh, I, I didn't get involved in much of that, of course, but uh, it was some of the, the department there that did that work. Why uh, they had to go out and retrieve these tanks, which had been burned, and all sorts of things. And it was a very tough job for them. All right, so then. Uh the, by then, the war starting to uh, well, the war was still went on until '45. So. Yes, yes, it did. So you were there quite a while in that. Uh, did they yeah, reassign was, you again, or did you uh, stay with that ordinance? No, right. We, uh, well, we kept. Uh, let's say I was in that, and then I got transferred to the hundred ordinance company, which was. Uh, uh, well, that was a tank outfit too. Uh, and we, uh, I was a company clerk there. It was while I was there that I, when I met uh, John Stempick. Oh, yeah. He, uh, somehow he, okay, he was a truck driver somehow, but and he happened to see my name in the roster, I guess, and so he stopped in to see me while I was there. I see. Uh, we were, I think we were located in Modena at that time. We had, we did move quite a bit from then on, moving up. Uh, as the, as the, uh, as we st took more of Italy, you you people right. shipped up with yeah, it. Yeah, we we kept moving, and uh, as it, the war was coming to a close, there the Germans were retreating, and I uh, actually they did sometime there we we almost uh, passed them. <laughs> uh, and when it, well, they were. We were moving up through there. Why, I, on a couple occasions, I had driven trucks and I had a license to drive a truck, so I was served as a truck driver. Too, I see. When we were moving. And that wasn't my cup of tea, though, really, because uh, Italy is some of the roads over there, they don't have any guardrails, and yeah. you can look down for a mile there and uh, right. up in the mountains there. And that was sort of hectic. Uh, in fact, I can remember driving, riding sometimes in the back of a four with a truck there uh, and uh, be standing in the back seat trying to hang on, you know, and uh, the truck driver didn't go very slow and you didn't <laughs> look down those cliffs there. <laughs> that, it's kind of scary. It'd make your it, stomach feel funny it too. Would, yes. All right, so then you, what happened now? You kept going up Italy and did, right. you, uh, uh, did you get into Germany or or did most of your time all? Uh, well, we got up as far as, uh, well, I went up to Milan. Uh, we, we kept moving up. In fact, uh, we were stationed in uh, Florence for a while and that was a nice city. I oh, enjoyed beautiful. that. Beautiful. Yeah, I've been there. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. It's better than most. Italian cities, of course, uh, a lot of them are severely damaged from the bombing. And, uh, right. uh, we didn't, uh, well, we heard the bombing and all that, and bomb raids and everything, but uh, it, uh, we weren't close enough to really get yeah, involved right. too much. So you went, so here we are, you're in Italy, and uh, the war, where, where were you when the war ended in uh, 45? Uh, Were you in Italy at that time? Yeah, I was in Italy. All right. All right. And what happened then, when the war ended? Uh, well, uh, when the war ended in Italy, I, uh, 
there was more, no need for us to remain there, so uh, we were uh, assigned to be, supposed to be assigned to the Pacific uh, area. I see. So right. we'd, uh, we'd gone to, where was it? I forget where we uh, sailed from, but uh, we were on our way to the Pacific uh, in the SeaCat, I guess the transport was. I see. And uh, we were happy to learn after we'd been sailing for, I don't know how many days it was, not, not too long. The war ended there, or, and so uh, we were advised to turn around and yeah. came back. It was a happy day, I'm it sure. Was. I'm sure you didn't worry about the atomic bomb being landed. No, no, <laughs> made you, it made a lot of people happy because yes. uh, they expected to lose uh, many, many men in the Battle of Japan. Yeah. All right, so then they turned around and where did you go? Uh, we came back to New York. Uh, and then uh, we were put on uh, leave. We were able to come home for a few days. I came home on a furlough, and probably, I think it was 10 days. That's the first and time you've been home in quite a while. Yes, it was. How, how long before you were you overseas like that and uh, you couldn't come home? Well, I guess I was overseas about a year and a half. I see. Or, well, maybe it wasn't quite that long. All right. So, all right, so you came home on furlough, and did you have enough points to get out? or? Uh, uh, yes, I, I did. And well, when, see, I guess... Uh, I forget, I, know, I had 68 or something like I that. See. And then you got discharged. Discharged. Yeah. All right, so you came back to, uh, when was that discharge? In uh, October of 45. 45, all right. So you came back to Hoosick Falls, or Hoosick, where you live. Right. And what happened then? Well, I went back to work at Noble Wood. I worked there for probably a year or two clerk in the uh, office there, uh, Josephine Codman, she was the cost accountant. I worked for her, uh, figuring standard costs. And, uh, I did that until uh, well, I, uh, I got a job in Troy. Manning Paper Company. I'm not sure just what year that was. Well, but you went to work down there, so you had oh. to commute to Troy every day. Right. I think that was a, probably about 1947. I see. And how long did you work at Manning? Uh, uh, I worked at Manning about uh, 10 years. I think it was. No, I think it was 13. I 13 see. years of it. All right. And that brought you a Then what happened? Uh, I was working at the Manning uh, Paper Company, and it was uh, the Mount Ida Mill, which is an old mill, and uh, I was doing office work there in Costa County, and uh, they closed that mill, and it was transferred to uh, Green Island. They had another plant in Green Island, so they continued that plant, but. Uh, I didn't, uh, well I guess I didn't have the room for me, so I had to still, uh, seek another job. And uh, I went to uh, work for what? Yeah, over in the Marble Lake, uh, LA, Allegheny Level. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, the steel company. I worked there for nine years uh, in the cost economy. For, I worked for uh, uh, Witherill. And uh, what, did you retire from them, or? Uh, no. No, I worked there for nine, nine and a half years, and it was. That was a very good place to work. I really enjoyed it. 
uh, but at that time they were having a hard time. To yeah, get still them. the. the so they, uh, it was time for my pension to be vested, and I and several others uh, lost our jobs at that time. But before you could vest your uh, yeah. retirement, so they'd yeah. save money. Is, so they could save money. Yeah, so, that happened. Yeah, a lot of big companies pulled that. Yeah. So uh, I had to look for another job, and I uh, went into the political end of it, I guess. And uh, I uh, applied for a job. Uh, the county uh, of the purchasing agent, and I more or less got it through a uh, supervisor. Yeah, so you worked John for the Lord county? And, uh, yes, and uh, Ray Seek, uh, who had been the former manager of the Ford Motor Company. I see. And, uh, I think my reason I got the job was because of my connection with the Boy Scouts and uh, Grade Six connection with the Boy Scouts. I see. Well, but you got the job and uh, and you very, worked there. Very good gentleman, really. Yeah. And, uh, and you worked out of Troy. Uh, yes, I, I was see. in the courthouse in Troy. Okay, so then now you're retired. Uh, yeah, I retired. I see. All right, now you got married. Had how many children? I I know your kids were at school when I was there. Yeah, in 1950, I got married, and I have four children: uh, Colleen, who's now married to Jim Monahan, yeah, right. and David, who lives in White Creek. Kathy, who is now living in Florida, and Derek, who is friends by me, living in Bennington. So, they live, some, most of them live around, so you at least can visit your children. They're yes. Not too far away. Except for Kathy, yeah. yeah. Could you, uh, do you have anything you'd like to say before we uh, call this a take that, uh, uh, cons about Hoosick Falls or about the service that, you, you know, things that you'd think might be interesting things to remember? Well, uh, yes, people are from Hoosick Falls and Hoosick area were very good to me. Uh, I had many letters and uh, communications that uh, Praised me and uh, it made you feel good. Uh, Terry Weir was very good. He uh, sent me letters lots of times and always asking if there's anything he do for me. I was mm, that's nice. Yeah. At, uh, Nova Wood and uh, Sarah Guyton, she uh, was a neighbor of mine and she was a poet uh, and uh, she used to write poems and she wrote a book eventually, and uh, she had uh, all us boys, uh, she had a poem about us. Uh, she book. wrote. I see, that's interesting. And I didn't know that. What she did, she uh, she didn't put their last name, she put uh, the like first. Frank P and uh, yeah, I so see. forth like that, but most people know who they were. I see. <clears throat> Yeah, it's interesting. I have to see about getting a book to see what it looks like. I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, I've got that. I'm glad to show it to you. Yeah, fine. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to say? No, I guess that's probably all. There's a lot more I could say, but uh, well, I, it was a really good experience. It's a service. I mean, yes. at least I think it was a, a people who didn't get hurt and came back. It was a very yes. a growing up experience. I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming, Frank.